Welcome back. It's time for math. We are, first of all, going over the homework that was due today, the stuff that you had to do in the textbook. I have already started looking at question number seven on Seesaw, which you will see right away. So can you please bring out a green pen and your math notebook and your math textbook so we can go over these questions first before we get into our new lesson today. Okay, so this was your homework from yesterday. We had to do questions. I'm we're now we're just going to do questions 11 through 13. So we had to say about what percent of each food is um, of each food is water. Okay. Um, so we had to write. Okay, it says about, but really we can tell pretty much exactly. Um, okay, so an apple. We know that these are going up the chart or the bar graph is going up in increments of 10 because here we have 50. So this would be 60, 70, 80, 90. So this one you should have ugh, this thing, 90% for this one, okay? For a watermelon, cool, this would be 95% because it's halfway between 90 and 100. An orange is the same, 90%, and then a potato is 80%. Isn't that interesting? And 80% of a potato is um, water. Cool. Okay, so then how much of the percent of each food is not water? So that means we just have to do the opposite and subtract. So we should have 10%, 5%, 10%, and 20%. Write each percent in the graph in fraction form. Okay, so that would be 90 over 100, 95 over 100, 90 over 100, and then 80 over 100. Great, okay, so number 12. Jeanette brought a portable CD player on sale. The regular price was $100. She was charged $89. What percent of the regular price did she pay? Well, this is pretty easy since the original price is 100. So she paid 90, no, sorry, 89% of the original cost. So you should have 89, 89%. Let's see if it won't do anything weird. Oh, it did. Okay, 89% of this one. And then what percent of regular price did she receive as a discount? So that means how much did she save? Well, we would just do 100 minus 89, whoops, which should be 11%. Um, all right, and the next one, Salvo said that one, uh, that of 100 singers in the children's choir in Whitehorse, 62% are girls and 48% are boys. Is this possible? Explain. Okay, I want you to say yes or no. Is this possible? I can hear you saying no. Very good. Because if we added these up, 62 plus 48, we would get 110. So the, he is, there's definitely no way he's right. So either... It would be 52% would be girls, or it would be if we kept if we kept 48%, or it would be 38% would be boys if there were actually 62% of girls. Okay, hopefully that went well for you. And now we're going on to today's lesson. So you need to bring out, it's actually the same I can statement, so you do not need to write that new, but as the top of a new page, and please put today's date, which is March 29th at the top of a new page or wherever you have space, and then finding percent using equivalent fractions is going to be today's topic. So it still relates to this. It's just a little bit of a further extension. Okay, here we go. So. Life is easy when the denominator is out of 100 or 10, like we've been practicing over the past couple of days. Because we know if, it's, if the denominator is out of 100, then we know that the fraction is just, if it's 89 over 100, then easy to convert to a percentage, just 89%. Or if it's over 10, then we know we have to multiply the, the uh, numerator by 10 to get whatever it would be out of 100. So those ones were happy if it's out of 10 or 100. So here's a couple examples. 40 over 100 is 40%. Six over 100 is not 60%, but it is 6%. Okay, remember that? This is a really small amount. <clears throat> if we did eight over 10, that's also easy. We would just multiply by 10. I hope you can say this out loud. We would be getting 80%. Another one, if we had one over 10, that's easy because it's over 10. We just multiply both numerator and denominator by 10 
to get 10 out of 10, which is, or 10 out of 400, which is 10%. Okay, what about when the denominator is something else? What if the denominator is not 100 or 10? <gasps> not so easy, that's what we're doing today. So maybe it is five or 20. I think you guys already have ideas of what we're gonna be doing today to figure out how we're gonna get the percent if the denominator is out of something other than 100 or 10. Okay, so what do you think we're gonna do? We're going to use equivalent fractions. That's right, we already have the skill. Okay, so using equivalent fractions, here is our pro tip. Find an equivalent fraction where the denominator is 100. So basically, we just have to convert our original fraction Find out what the magic number is to get the denominator to be 100. Okay, so here's a couple examples for us to work through. Okay, so say that we had, I should get my pen back here. Okay, so say this is going to be, you know, painful because I have to draw this. Okay, so say that we had 3 over 4. Okay, we have to figure out our magic number for what we're going to multiply by to get to a denominator of... 100. Okay, this is where we have to have our pretty good basic facts. So what times 4 times what gives us 100? Okay, I hope some people are saying it out loud. The answer should be 25. Okay, if we think if we have 4 quarters, for example, in $1, and a quarter is each worth 25 cents, then we would have a um, dollar. So 3 times 25 is, basic facts, 75, okay? So then that means we would have 75% is the same as 3 over 4. Okay, another one. What is our magic number if we had our denominator of 25? What would that be? Okay, 25 times, I hope you're saying this, 4, it's actually just the same one we did over here, is equal to 25 over 4 is 25 times 4 is 100 and then 6 times 4 is 24 so there we go that's your answer 24 over 100 or it would be 24 percent okay and then this one's a little bit trickier is there going to be a magic number that we can get to multiply 6 to get 100 Hmm, there isn't, is there? So what other strategy could we use to find something that's gonna help us get to 100? Could we divide? We could, we could divide six. What's a friendly number that we know can easily get to 100? We can divide six by three. And then our denominator would be six divided by three is two, okay? So three divided by three is one. And then could we easily convert this to 100? I hope so. It, to get 100, two times what gives us 100? Two times, I don't have enough space, hopefully you do. Two times 50, right? Two times 50. So, oh, this thing, okay. So one times 50 is 50. So three out of six is the same as 50. You might have been able to figure out that, that one just by using your head because you know that this is 3 over 6 is just half. So that would also work. Okay, so that is actually it for today's lesson. That's all that you need to do. So our homework, oh, okay, one, one other question. You're probably thinking, well, what if the denominator is not something that easily converts to 100? Maybe like 3 or maybe another um, prime number such as maybe 11? For grade six, you do not need to know how to do that. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, if we finish this unit early, I can teach you, but all that you need to focus on or know for today, all of the questions are going to give you are pretty simple, which will have numbers that will easily get to 100, most likely by multiplying. Sometimes you might have to do a division and then a multiplication. Okay, so your homework is Page 192, 193, questions one, two, six. So in the textbook, that is here. Okay, so you have to do one, two, three, 
four, and then five and six. A couple things for this, you do not need to do this part where you have to shade the 100 grid. Okay, if you want to, oh, that was cool. If you want to, you can. But really what I want you to do is just write each as a, uh, write each fraction as a percent and as a decimal. Okay, that's all that you have to do. Same thing for this, you do not have to do the shading of the 100 grid unless you really want to. Same thing for this, unless you want to, just do them all as a fraction decimal and that's when you're gonna do fraction and percent. Okay, this one you have to use pictures to figure it out. For these two, you're actually going to use um, Seesaw for this. So I have made you a page. Oh no, where is it? Um, okay, I've made you a page on, um, class on, oh no, where is it? Okay, I've made you a page on, I have to find it, sorry. Okay, right here it is. Okay, I've made you this page, which is on Seesaw, okay? So you need to write what percent of each set is shaded. Okay, so you might need to write this as a fraction first, maybe find equivalent fractions, and then show your work, show me how you found that. And then this is what number six is. Okay, so tell me if the fraction is greater than or less than 50%, and then explain your work, show here how you know. Okay, so that is due for tomorrow, okay? Um, and I already in the morning message have talked about Prodigy. So you do also need to start playing some Prodigy this week. There is nothing due tomorrow, okay? The Prodigy lesson, as I've already said, continues for the entire week, okay? Um, have fun and good luck.